So today, we're going to cover monopsony. Now, what does the word monopsony sound like to you? Sounds like a monopoly. And you know that a monopoly is where there is one powerful seller. A monopsony, therefore, is where there is a powerful buyer. A good definition is something along the lines of, a monopsony is where there is one or a group of powerful buyers. A great example of that is the supermarkets. How many supermarkets are there? Probably about four or five big ones. Tesco, Asda, Sainsbury's, M&S, etc. Right? Therefore, if you think of it in this way, there are three players here. Player one is the farmer. We're going to call them the supplier. Player two is the supermarket, Tesco. And player three is the consumer, you and I who go and buy produce from Tesco. Tesco have monopsony power over the sellers, over the suppliers. Because if I am Tesco and I go up to a particular farm and say to them, I want it at this price. Are they in a position to be like, no, I'm not going to sell it to you? Not really, because there are hardly any other supermarkets that they can sell to. So who has the power in that relationship? Tesco has the power in that relationship. Let's explore what happens then when monopsony power goes up. We're going to do it initially from a diagrammatic perspective. If Tesco have an increase in monopsony power, what does that do to their costs? Well, it's going to reduce their costs. And what type of cost is it? It's a variable cost because they get to decide how many units they buy off the farm. It's not a fixed amount that they have to buy. They're going to basically say, we want to buy X amount from you this month. So their variable costs are going to go down. So what we're going to draw is just a normal cost and revenue diagram. If you haven't seen the video about how to draw these diagrams, please check it out. And we're going to now shift MC and AC because when variable costs change, both your marginal and your average cost goes down in this instance. So, as you can see, MC shifts down, we get the new output, quantity's gone up, price has gone down, and average cost going down results in a higher profit for the firm as well, which should make sense. Now, bear in mind, by the way, that the price has just gone down. Remember that. What we're going to do is simply this. We're going to go through the factors that would suggest that monopsony power in a market is high, and then we're going to do the factors that suggest that it's not so high or it's low, or things that could limit the degree of monopsony power. Number one. The first reason why monopsony power in a market may be high is if there is evidence of suppliers' profits falling. Because if monopsony power was high, Tesco would push down the price they pay for their produce. So therefore the suppliers, their profits are now being squeezed. One. Number two. Number two is to look at the concentration ratio in the market. If there are only a handful of buyers, then that would probably suggest that there is a high degree of monopsony power because you have no choice but to accept selling to one of these guys. So two, monopsony power is high. Number three relates back to the diagram that we drew. If you see the price that consumers are paying for the good going down, that can also suggest that monopsony power is high. And the rationale behind that is because when monopsony power increases, one of the things that, let's say, the supermarkets can do is they can pass some of those benefits on to you, the consumer, because they know they're going to get more customers that way. So number three is if the price is paid for the good by the consumers is going down, monopsony power is high. Number four, another factor that would suggest monopsony power is high is if there are many, many sellers. If you think about it this way, imagine that there was only one farm that Tesco could buy its produce from in a 500 mile radius. Are Tesco going to try and push down their price? Probably not, because they have no choice but to buy off that particular farm. But if there are a thousand farms either side of that farm, then yeah, because they can say to them, if you don't sell it to us at this price, I'll just go next door and get it from them. Therefore, monopsony power is high when there are loads and loads of sellers. Monopsony power is also high if the good that's being sold is really similar, or even more extreme, homogenous, identical. Because if you're selling potatoes, your potatoes are probably very similar to all the other potatoes that are being sold. Therefore, if I try as Tesco to dictate prices to you, you have no real choice but to accept because you know that I can get my potatoes from someone else. So these are the factors that suggest that monopsony power in a market are high. Factors that suggest monopsony power are not high. Number one, do you think Tesco can dictate the price to Coca-Cola? Do you think that Tesco can go up to Coca-Cola and go, hey, we want it at that price? Probably not. Why? Because Coca-Cola themselves are a monopoly. In other words, monopoly power can offset monopsony power. They cancel each other out. 
So a really good evaluative point or a really good point to like stress is if there are monopolies in place, if there are strong firms or strong brand loyalty, the monopsony power won't be high, one. Number two, the second reason why monopsony power may not be high is if suppliers merge. What if they get together so that suddenly rather than them being 1,000 different farms, for example, there's only 10, hypothetically, they are now more powerful. It is not as easy for you to bully them. It is not as easy for you as a supermarket to dictate prices to them because there aren't as many. So that's two. Number three, a really easy generic point is the regulator, the CMA, could step in to reduce the degree of monopsony power that exists in that industry. They could step in. Number four, if the quality of the good that you produce is so high, if you're really efficient, if you're always on time, if you produce on time, high quality every single time, do you think the supermarket is going to try and dictate prices to you? Probably not. So for example, let's say you sell the best strawberries in the whole of the UK. I, as m &S, as Tesco, whoever I have that relationship with, I don't want to lose you as my supplier. Therefore, I am not likely to dictate prices to you. So the higher the quality being produced, the more unique the good, the, le the less monopsony power that exists. And finally, number five is the question. The first thing that we said is we said, hey, monopsony power is high because the profits of these suppliers are falling. Well, their profits might be falling not because of monopsony power. It could be falling because they're just internally inefficient. It might be that they aren't particularly good at what they're doing, and it's not monopsony power that's caused their profits to fall, but rather that their internal costs are high, or their sales are low, whatever it might be. I'd highly recommend that you do the June 2012 uh, 9C, it's a great question, it's about monopsony power in the supermarket industry with a firm called Northern Foods. And look through the mark scheme and you'll see that we have hit pretty much every single point, it's as easy as that. Hope that was helpful. Please subscribe to our other videos and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you for watching. Why not subscribe to our platform to see other videos like this one? You can also register to attend intensive revision courses, book a private tutor and utilize our in-house revision resources to help you achieve top grades. Good luck.